Well, thanks guys for popping in. Once again, to uh, view my videos, I'm just out on the Fonderest TF1. We've got a bit of traffic here at the in the intersection of Tonkin Highway and Morley Drive, and we're just going out to see what the Fonderest feels like. Just down here next to the Swan River. Well, I've actually gone the wrong way, so I'm lost. So let's go back up to the cycle path. But yeah, almost at the river. And I'll just get some pics down there. It's a beautiful day today. It's, the, as you can see, the sky is nice and blue. And I think this will be the last of the good weather before we head into winter. And it's Anzac Day today, so we've got a day off. And Anzac stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. And it's to respect the people that have died in all of the wars that New Zealand and Australia has engaged in. Well, here we are down by the Swan River, and it's absolutely gorgeous down here. There's people out boating, and there's, I've seen quite a few cyclists I've passed on the way, so it's just one of those days people are just trying to get the best of the good weather before the winter comes in. Normally, Easter Anzac Day is the turning point before it starts to get a bit. Uh, bit horrid over here in Australia but uh, what I call horrid is probably autumn or spring in uh, in the northern hemisphere but anyway for those people who are living in that part of the world we're just big softies and and uh, we can't take it when it gets below 10 degrees and we don't like the rain here because uh, we have such good weather so that's it but uh, we do need those things in the winter because obviously we have drinking water and we need those sorts of things for the community and, and things to continue on in the community well, anyway back to bikes so the burning question is, is the Fonda Rest? I've had the bike and I've ridden it a few times and what, what is this bike like? You know, how does it perform? Should you buy one? Now, the first thing that I would like to say about the Fonda Rest, it, it does state on their website that this bike is made in Italy, but Italy has some funny laws and if a bike has had some part of the processing done, they can call it made in Italy. Now I know the Fonderest TF0 is made in Italy by Sato Bikes under license for Fonderest, but the TF1 I do believe is made in Asia. So it's an Asian made bike and it does actually look quite different to the TF0 and you can see the TF0 is actually is a Sato bike and looks like a Sato bike. So at the end of the day this bike is probably out of Asia. Uh, we won't hold that against it because the Asian bikes are still very good. But I did get it for quite a reasonable price on discount because it was an older model and it was the last frame they had in the bike shop. So I had a choice to pick from a few others, Geos frame and uh, an older Bianchi which ended up being too big and the Fonda Rest. And so I chose the Fonda Rest, it's a very light frame. So I had that built up. Okay, so what about the bike? You know, what is it ride like? Well, the first impressions is it's very stable. Uh, compared to my Batechia and my Colnago C60, the bike tracks very straight. It feels a lot more relaxed when you're riding. It doesn't feel quite so twitchy. When you're out of the saddle, the bike tracks very, very straight. And this was part of the design characteristic of the bike. When Abachi Fonderest basically made this bike, and uh, he wanted it to be a sprinting bike. And it does, out of the saddle, it feels extremely stable. And it does give the impression that it's a very fast bike when you're riding along and, and I suppose that's because it does feel stable and it does feel like it's really wanting to go when you get above about 30 kilometers an hour. So that's my first impressions. I haven't done any controlled tests so that could be just feel and perception rather than any real 
increase in speed on the bike's behalf. But I will say that uh, it wasn't the enthusiasm of a new bike because I have a watt meter and I was watching the watts, so watts are all the same. But at quite low watts, it still feels like it, you're really moving along. Anyway, so that's the bike. It could be the wheels. Uh, I do have some very, very deep dish wheels on it, some Reynolds deep dish tubulars which are very light as well, they're about 1300 grams, so maybe that's having a little bit of an influence. And I had those wheels previously on another bike. So okay, well let's have a look what's on the, on the bike and what group set and what bits and pieces I decided to put on this bike. Well first things first, let's have a look at the group set. What I have fitted here is the Record Campia Nolo Revolution, which is the superseded model that now the trail speed has replaced which uh, was a little bit expensive at the moment because I was replacing a bike and I didn't have the funds. Those things, I think, uh, Aussie are about three grand. So uh, I had this group set on another bike, so I just transferred it, so I saved money there. So there's the derailleur, which has the three uh, adjustments on it, only one in the big ring and two in the little ring. I'm running on this one the 5034 front chain rings, which are the compact ones. And on the back, I'm running the derailleur, the Campagnolio Record, which is the of the HO design, which means that it's the medium length derailleur, so you can fit on a bigger cassette. Reynolds come with DT Swiss hubs, so it's easy to change the hubs from Campagnolio to Shimano, and these wheels originally came with Campagnolio free hubs, so I changed that to a Shimano, and the cassette I fitted on is a SRAM 1136. Now the reason why I do this is because I like to spin, and I like to have that uh, capacity percentage in my gears. It just means you can just really keep your cadence consistent, and I like that, so I had that modified had that changed over and I ordered the SRAM cassette and for some reason the SRAM cassettes they give a much sharper change which I really 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 like I like that sharp changing that you when you hit the button it goes dunk I love that I love that sort of thing so that's my SRAM cassette there the wheels are Reynolds 66 millimeter so they're quite deep and these ones are actually tubulars so that means you have to stick them on with tape or glue they're not clinches and the tubes are sewn up inside. So they're SDV 66 tubulars. So they're the whims and they're about 1300 grams in weight. So very, very nice. And as the rubber is Velaflex tires that I like to run. They're an Italian made tire, handmade in Italy. Very, very nice tire and uh, quite good for puncture resistance as well. As good as the Continentals, maybe even slightly better. The pads I'm running are the Cryo Reynolds Blue Pads. They're actually very good. I don't find them quite as good as the Campagnolio Red ones in the dry, but as an all-round brake pad, they work a lot better in the wet, so you have that overall benefit of wet and dry braking. So 
probably overall they're a better pad, an all-round pad than the Campagnolio, but the Campagnolios are far superior in the dry. They just really, really work well. And of course here we have the Campagnolo Record Skeleton Brakes, rim brake design, which I prefer, so they're fitted. We have the Campagnolo Record Shifters up front, which are beautiful feel and lovely and comfy. And then we have the 3T handlebars. These are actually carbon handlebars. And they came off a Cervelo that I had before. And uh, I really like them. They're 40 centimeters wide. So I find that size fits perfect. We're also running a 3T front stem out front. So that is matches up with the handlebars 3T. This one's not a carbon one, it's just an aluminium one. So it's not the top of the range or anything special. And here we have the, uh, the steering mechanism from the fork. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of spacing at the top there, which I should really get cut down. But what you need to do with these plugs, it's very, very important that this plug here, this plug here that goes inside, you need to make sure that that plug can reach right down below your, your stem where it's clamped on. Because what actually happens is, is what people don't realize is the carbon doesn't like pressure points and the plug actually supports the carbon inside the fork so when you're clamping there's actually a plug a metal plug that stops it like collapsing inside and that plug needs to be long enough to reach below your, your lowest bolt now I actually had a BB a triple B one put in but the, the Colnago ones are also very long you need to have a long plug so that's something that's very important because that's a, a huge fail point if this part here breaks, you're going, you're going to go over the handlebars and you're going to hit the deck. And the seat post is a carbon light one, a Super Allegro Dita. Very, very nice. And it's only got a 12 mil setback because I find that when I run my, my seats on these seat posts, I'm running them fully forward. So I asked Steve at Elite Racing Cycles if he could get me one so I got a little bit more adjustment. As you can see, they'll mark it with a black pen. And also down the bottom there, oh, it's on the other side, but there's a white mark at the bottom there. So if it moves, I know where to put it back. The seat that I choose is the Adamo, the Adamo ISM road seat. This is the older design one, which actually I prefer better, feels a lot nicer. The newer ones, they've changed the design at the front and it has more of a taper off. These are a little bit more squared, but my bum likes this one a little bit better. But I love the Adamo seats. They feel really good underneath my bottom. And the bottle cages, there's, uh, I gifted these off another bite. They're actually quite old, so they've been on a few bites. This is the Moro Elite Carbon, and the other one is the Tax Carbon. So they're both very, very light, and yeah, ridiculous prices, 100 bucks Australian for these type of, type of ones, so you gotta make sure you get the most out of them. Here we have a brand new cycle path. It hasn't even been marked up yet. This is the North Link highway that's going to end up at Muche in Perth, West Australia. As you can see, it's four meter wide path. It's going to be beautiful when it's finished. I don't know how far it goes. I probably shouldn't even be riding on it. But anyway, it's beautiful and thanks to the uh, to Main Roads for building this stuff for us. Whoops. I think this is where it ends, guys.